What up, friends? Welcome back to another episode of The Daily Dose. We're on day number 104. Day number 104. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. And today we're looking at 2 Kings chapters 12, 13, and 14. And we're also going to be picking up Psalm number 104 today, okay? So, we start off today with the story about Joash repairing the temple. Okay, so if you'll remember, Joash was king over Judah, um, which was centered in the area of Jerusalem, which was where the temple was. Now, apparently the temple had taken some damage over the years. Um, Things had been stolen. Um, You know, wars had come and gone and the city had been besieged and, and so on and so forth. So I'm assuming that the temple probably wasn't in the best shape. There appears to have been some sort of damage to it physical structural damage, um, as well as things that had been plundered or stolen or taken or missing over the years. So in the seventh year of, of Jehu, uh, and I believe Jehu was on the Israel side of the kingdom, in the seventh year of Jehu, Joash becomes king. Okay, So we read that Joash reigned for 40 years in Jerusalem. Joash did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. However, he did not remove the high places of sacrifice that were in the land. And normally, when we read about the high places, it was usually places where pagan uh, sacrifices were held. Sacrifices that were not authorized or done for for the Lord God. So, um, Joash comes to a point where he has the people count, the, the priests count the money. Basically, the money that's in the temple account. Hey, tally up the money, see how much money we've got. And he tells them to use it to repair the temple, to get it back in good order. Um, The priests end up paying the skilled workers with this money, you know, the carpenters, the stone workers, you know, whoever. Um, And and, and they get to repairing the temple. Uh, And then we read that Hazael, who was the king of Aram at the time, ends up attacking Jerusalem. So Joash gives the dedicated sacred objects and gold from the temple treasury just gives it over to ha- to Hazael to pay him off basically and and he ends up withdrawing and and not you know attacking further and takes his spoils with him and gets out of there um, eventually we read that his officials conspire against him and they murder him um, Amaziah his son succeeds him Okay, so that was, again, looking more at the Judah side of, of the split kingdom. Now we're jumping back over to the Israel side, Samaria side of the split kingdom. So Jehoahaz is the next king we're talking about. In the 23rd year of Joash, down in the, the Judah side of the kingdom, um, Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, took power. Okay, uh, We read that he reigned for 17 years. And guess what? He did evil in the sight of the Lord, like so many before him. Um, He was ultimately succeeded by his son, Jehoash. So um, Jehoash becomes king in the the 37th year of Joash's rule in Judah. So we've got Jehoash and we've got Joash. I know it's confusing. So Joash, the king in Judah had been reigning for 37 years at this time when Jehoash becomes king over the uh, Israel side of the split kingdom. Um, He reigned for 16 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Um, Then we come to find out um, that Elisha ends up dying from an illness in this passage. And um, Hazael, the king of Aram, dies. Um, Jehoash took back many cities from the rule of from uh, the people of Aram, right? Because when Hazael was there, um, there was a lot of a lot of fighting going on, and and cities being captured and things of that nature. So after Hazael dies, um, Jehoash was able to take back a lot of the cities that they had lost within the territory. Okay. Then we go to read about Amaziah, king of Judah. Okay. So again, we're switching from the Israel side of the kingdom back over to Judah side of the kingdom now. Um, During the second year of Jehoash, the king we just read about on the Israel side, um, Amaziah, on the Judah side, takes power. 
He was 25 years old, and he reigns for 29 years. And he actually did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, which is kind of few and far between um, in, in what we read here with, with these kings, it seems. However, this guy also did not remove the high places. Not the first time we've heard that. Um, however, he did execute the officials who had murdered his father, the king, previously. Now we're going to go look at Jeroboam, king of Israel. All right, so in, in the 15th year of Amaziah, the Judah king that we just read about, in the 15th year of that guy, um, Jeroboam comes to power on the Israel side of the kingdom. He reigns for 41 years. He does evil in the eyes of the Lord. Um, and then we read that when he died, Zechariah, his son, succeeds him as king. Okay. Uh, one thing that I wanted to touch on as kind of a point of interest, if you go look at Psalm 104, um, verse number 5 and 6, it says, He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. You cover it with watery depths as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. Okay, I want to draw your attention, though, more so to that first verse. And this is basically um, the psalmist ascribing praise to God. He's saying that, that God set the earth on its foundations and it can never be moved. And, and I think that what he's getting at there is, um, is that basically God did such a, a wondrous and miraculous work in creating the earth that, that it can never be moved that nothing can happen to it apart from God's will and apart from God allowing it to happen, right? I don't physically think that he's saying that he set the earth on its foundations, okay? Because we know that the earth is floating around. It's not sitting on a foundation like a house is sitting on a foundation, right? So that kind of cues us in that this is sort of figurative language. And it says, you know, it can never be moved. So he's basically saying that it's 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 sturdy, it's reliable, it's it's strong. There was a builder who set it in its place, right? Amen. However, um, back in the day, uh, the Roman Catholic Church used to think that that they took this literally, like, okay, the Earth doesn't move, so the sun must be rotating around the earth because the earth stands still. The earth is the center of the universe because of the scripture. And then Galileo comes along and basically has this bright idea that, hey, actually everything is rotating around the sun, not around the earth. And so the Roman Catholics tried to get Galileo to denounce his, his new scientific theory because they thought that it, it went against what they believed in the Bible. But any of the places that I've read, um, and there's a few, but any of the places that I've read specifically says something very similar to this. It says, you know, he set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. Okay. That, that's clearly not saying that the earth is fixed and it's static and it's in one physical location and the earth does not move one inch or one degree this way or that way. And everything revolves around it. To me, it's clear that that's not what this is saying. Um, but that is how the Roman Catholics took that. And so there was a big to-do um, trying to say that, that Galileo was promoting heresy um, by trying to claim that the sun was actually the center of the universe and everything revolved around it. So there's an interesting little tidbit of trivia knowledge for you guys for today. But anyways, I'll leave you with that. And again, thank you so much for being here. Love you guys. Appreciate you. And until we meet again, deuces.